Charlie Barrett. Milwaukee. Thank you, Milwaukee. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. I grew up with a thick Wisconsin accent, but I had no clue I had a Wisconsin accent until Siri first came out. <laughs> Remember that? I was like, hey there, Siri, how in the heck are you? Hey, tell your folks I says, hi. Listen, I'm looking for directions to the nearest fleet farm, okay? I think they got one over there by the quick trip, and honestly, I gotta fill my gas, okay? So why don't you get me directions to the fleet farm, and then the quick trip, and if there's a Culver's in between there, I won't be mad, okay? <laughs> And, and, you know, there are a lot of other iPhone users out there, and I want you to know that I know that. So if you got to, go ahead and get to me last, okay? <laughs> Boop! Dialing 911, you are having a stroke. <laughs> so that was the first time I was like, okay, maybe I talk a little different. But I didn't know for sure I had a Wisconsin accent until I went to school for broadcast journalism. It's not the joke, that's the setup. I'm not, I'm not sure why you're laughing. I had dreams back in the day. Back in the day, I wanted to be the next Brian Williams. Hold your applause for Brian Williams to the end of the show. Look, I, no, don't get me wrong. I'm talking Brian Williams back before he got caught lying about the whole helicopter situation in Iraq. You remember that, where he's like, I got shot down in a helicopter in Iraq. But then the guy who actually got shot down in the helicopter in Iraq was like, the hell you did, Brian! <laughs> and boom, he got canceled. Do you remember those days when you could get canceled just for lying? Those were the days. Now lying is just a prerequisite to become president. And <laughs> and I'm not sure if you're clapping for the president I'm thinking of, but the point is, <laughs> they've all been liars. Now some more than others, one more than all, but they've all been liars. <laughs> Here's the real question. When are we, the people, gonna stop electing liars to the highest office in the land? When the Vikings win the Super Bowl. <laughs> so anyways, I wanted to be the next Brian Williams, all right? Eh. I had this professor with one of those golden NPR voices. Who listens to NPR out there? Who's got glasses on? Okay, real good. You know what I'm talking about. From NPR News in Washington, I'm going to judge your sorry ass. Charlie, let's hear your anchor read. Thank you. In Menasha today, police pulled over a guy from Ashwabanon for not stopping at the stop and go light. Police arrested the man for having weapons in his bag. Well, I'm glad you're laughing. He sure as hell was not. He was sitting there huffing and puffing. His face was puckering like he just found a fresh hemorrhoid, you know, and he was like, Charlie, has anybody ever told you that you have a voice for print? <laughs> so I took his emotional abuse and I ended up getting a voice coach. Now here's the deal. You can find somebody to change the voice coming out of your mouth. It's possible. But you will never find anyone to change the voice inside your head. Jeepers, cripes, folks, no way. I've been here the whole gosh darn time. Tell them the story about the time we went to the Apple store, in fact. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them that story. It's a terrible story. It always bombs. I'm not going to do it. Fine, I'll tell them. So we go to the Apple store. <laughs> 
and I belly up to the Apple Genius Bar, and I'm looking around at these geniuses, and I says, Cripes, Apple, if you're such geniuses, where in the hell is the beer in your bar? Where are your pull tabs? Can you even make an old fashioned? Where are your pickled eggs? Where is Randy, who drove his lawn tractor here and is too hammered to drive it home? <laughs> Sir, can we help you fix your iPad or no? Um, <laughs> Believe it or not, I did get a job in local news. I got a job in Dallas, Texas. Anyone from Texas here? Any Cowboys fans in the audience? You're a Cowboys fan. No, don't boo them, don't boo them. No, 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 no. I think the Cowboys are one of the bravest teams in the NFL. They're the only team brave enough to make their logo their most common Yelp review. And that is just... <laughs> it's a one-star joke. Low hanging fruit, <laughs> yum. Anyways, I get a job in Texas. You can take the kid out of Wisconsin, you can never take the Wisconsin out of the kid. Because if you're thirsty in Wisconsin, where do you go? The bar. The bar, okay, I should have specified. Sorry, I've, I forgot I'm in Milwaukee, okay. If you're thirsty for water, where do you go? The bar. The bubbler, and half of you are still saying the bar, okay. No, you go to the bubbler, and I don't know who said water fountain, that is absolutely false. We do not go to the water fountain unless we need change for the meter. If we want water, we go to the bubbler. But here's the deal. Inside Wisconsin, a bubbler is a device used to drink water. But you go anywhere else, a bubbler is not a device used to drink water. No, a bubbler is a device you use to smoke the devil's lettuce. <laughs> a lot of you are high right now. And actually, it, it don't look like this at all. It's more like... <laughs> yeah, I read an article about it on the internet. Um, Cut to the nine o'clock news in Dallas, Texas, which I am anchoring. <laughs> well, it's gonna be a hot one tomorrow. Make sure you stay inside and maybe find yourself a bubbler. Good night. <laughs> so that's how I lost that job and you can blame me. Can you really blame me? Because the states aren't even consistent on this issue, are they? No. You go to Texas, ask to use a bubbler, all you're going to get is a misdemeanor. Or you go to Colorado and ask to use a bubbler, you're not getting a misdemeanor, all you're getting is hungry. You know? <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of the story. I, I was in Colorado recently, uh, I was getting hungry with a friend of mine, and I says to him, <laughs> I says, pull the brats out of the freezer and unthaw them. You would not believe what he had the audacity to say to me. He said, what are brats? <laughs> what are brats? <laughs> Have you not read the Bible? <laughs> the Israelites walked through the desert for 40 years and God took pity upon them and he sent them down food from heaven. It was called manna. Manna means brats. <laughs> They're like hot dogs, but better. Please just pull them out of the freezer and unthaw them. <laughs> but if they're in the freezer, aren't they already unthawed? <laughs> Guy, I am way too hungry for this conversation right now. Please just pull the brats out of the freezer and unthaw them. I think you mean you want them thawed, man. <laughs> yes, I want them thawed, man. But everyone knows to thaw them, you gotta unthaw them. <laughs> and then we just stared at each other <laughs> long enough for them brats to unthaw. <laughs> then we threw them on the grill and uncooked them.
Thank you. Sorry, I'm drinking tea uh, and whiskey. Um, <laughs> hot toddy. I've had, a, I've had a little bit of a cough uh, recently. You know, it's a weird time to have a little bit of a cough, you know? <laughs> There were a few things that went away with the pandemic that I personally was okay with. You remember when handshakes went away? Now I can tell I lost half the crowd there, okay? Don't worry, I like a good handshake. But there is this one guy who has decided to ruin handshakes for the rest of us. And it's the guy that just insists on squeezing the living crap out of your hand. You know, like he's trying to add inches to his bratwurst with his handshake. <laughs> he suffers from TBS, that's tiny bratwurst syndrome. Same thing Putin suffers from, you get it. <laughs> yeah, Putin's got a tiny pecker for sure. I mean, he's got a micro pecker, I tell you that. And no offense to anyone with a micro pecker, but you know that guy's got one, okay? <laughs> No, but when they're squeezing the hell out of your hand, what, like, what do you want me to do at this point? You know, what are my options? I'm either sitting here like a floppy walleye, or I get into the web and match your strength. But what if I do that? What if I match his strength? And then, and then our eyes make contact. And then I get nervous, and my toe starts tapping like I'm an Idaho senator in a Minneapolis bathroom. Then what? That joke's from 2007, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get it. You found the squeezy things at the gym. I don't know where those are. What, are they in the same box with the bands, you know, that you use to work out your side ass? <laughs> What's wrong, sir? You don't work out your side ass? What's... <laughs> I used to work out my side ass all the time. Back when I was an exotic dancer at Northern Exposure. Yeah, my stripper name back then was Ratchet Strap. They'd slap me on the ass and say, that's not going anywhere. Some of you aren't sure if I was actually a stripper back in the day. Actually, I, I used to do polka, so if someone can give me a good polka, I can really uh, show some nips to polka. I tell you that right now. All right, I see, I see the judgmental faces out there. I see the judgmental faces, but I ask you this. Milwaukee, who are you to judge? Huh? How many of you have said, screwed the pooch? <laughs> oh, I know there are more of you than that. <laughs> It's one of the most common Midwest phrases. I screwed the pooch. Here's what I want to know. Who was the first guy? <laughs> to walk into a room and say, I screwed the pooch. <laughs> Forget about that guy for a second. Who was his mom? who was hosting a dinner party at the time, I'd assume. I had all her friends over there. Son comes in, I screwed the pooch. <laughs> Kids these days, they say the darndest things, don't they? The dab, you know, and the wop, and, and screwed the pooch. It just means he made a mistake. That's, that's all it means, very innocent. He made a mistake. <laughs> Todd, where the hell is Baxter? <laughs> Anyways, I got a little off track. Let's, uh, let's go back to when I got fired from my job. <laughs> so after I lost that job in Texas, I moved out to Los Angeles, and I decided to become a red carpet reporter. Now, I was a bad red carpet reporter, in all honesty, and it's really not my fault. I, I, I have this disease called facial agnosia, no, it's not funny, it's very serious. Uh, it's, it, it, what it means is I have a hard time telling the difference between faces, because I didn't do any research before the red carpet. <laughs> but I tell you what I did notice on the red carpet. Everyone in Los Angeles gets plastic surgery. That's what I noticed. I was like, why does everyone in LA get plastic surgery? But in the Midwest, not so much. And then it hit me. It's the seasons. In LA, it's 75 and sunny every single day. And when it's summer, every single day, 
you want to live forever. <laughs> so you get the Botox and the fillers and the whatnots and your hoo-hahs and the calf chops. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Midwest, we got the season, so we're not getting plastic surgery. No, we're saying, you know, honestly, hon, I hope I'm dead before February. <laughs> No, it was tough being a Midwest guy in L.A. It was tough. I was always holding doors for people who didn't want them held for you. You know, I held the elevator even. I was that guy, you know, making it awkward. I'd pick up names people were dropping all the time, you know. Like, there's your Tom Hanks, sir. By the way, my dad knows Tom, too. Tom the taxidermist over there in Ashwaubenon. He's a real good guy, you know. I was walking down the street, waving to everybody. They were like, I thought Jeffrey Dahmer died, you know? And... Okay, that cannot be what you laugh the hardest at in this special, please. Can we edit out the laughs for that joke? That would be nice. <laughs>